Greetings and welcome to another thrilling and exciting episode of the Planetary Persuader. I am Cosmic Kev, your host. This is for the weekend, beginning with Black Friday of all things, the um, 23rd of November 2018. Now, <clears throat> looking at the sky today, we've got a moon that was full last night and um, it was in the constellation of Taurus if we looked in the sky and <clears throat> in the nakshatra of Kritika and it's moving into Rohini today. Rohini's all beautiful like a cart and everything and and <clears throat> and it's in the constellation of Taurus but in Western astrology we say it's a Gemini moon coming down from a Gemini full moon just barely in Gemini in Western astrology. <clears throat> It's definitely water here. For those of you that know about the location of the Planetary Persuader, we've had a series of um, incredible traumatic loss and fires and burning and you know and, and displaced people. And uh, here in Chico, fortunately, we didn't burn, so we're we're happy and grateful and all that kind of great stuff, but a lot of people are not so fortunate. And so um, my heart goes out to them, and they're they're doing stuff to build, and people are helping, and there's a lot of good help out there. Um, and of course, there's a lot of stupidity. But like Frank Zappa says, you know, I asked one time, I asked Frank, says, "What do you think is the biggest? Says the biggest." The rarest commodity in the world, or the biggest commodity in the world, isn't space or oxygen. The biggest commodity in the world is um, stupidity. <laughs> I know it's not very, it's not very positive. But anyhow, we're going to go here from Friday the 23rd all the way through Friday to up to the 30th or through the 29th. This week's edition. Of Planetary Persuader with me, your host, Cosmic Kev. So, greetings, Aries, and welcome to your horoscope. All right, so we've got ourselves a moon in Gemini today. What can we say about the Gemini moon? Well, we it is your third house. Third house is about communication. Third house is about neighbors. It's about traveling, mostly like local travel within about 250 miles from your place. You know, it's way back east, uh, eastern part of the United States. You've got 250 miles, that's an incredible distance, you know. And somebody who lives in like Utah or Nevada would be like, 250 miles, you're my neighbor, you know. So it's just like, it all, it's all relative. Um, and so, but for you, you've got Uranus in the first house. And Uranus is opposing Venus in the seventh house. So, and the sun has moved into your ninth house. So you went through a lot of transformation while the sun was in Scorpio. And now the sun is in the western sign of uh, Sagittarius. And so Sagittarius' key phrase is, I see or I visualize. And the sun is there with both Mercury and Jupiter. And so, and it's in the ninth house. So this is a lot about research, intelligence, higher knowledge, going the high road, um, helping out with some kind of charitable cause. All of this is to your benefit. So, and it's a luckier time. And so things should be, even though Mercury's retrograde, you know, it's, Mercury retrograde when Jupiter's helping it by being in the same sign is not that bad and it's lightweight, you know, compared to Venus retrograde. So say when you're in a creative community, Venus retrograde does all kinds of you know, it, it messes with your psyche. And so we don't have to worry with it, about our psyches being messed with. Better things are happening. The only other thing I'd say is now that Mars is in your twelfth house, it's like the house of secret enemies, maybe not getting enough sleep, kind of restless, um, and maybe even hostility about your own self, about karma that didn't work out so well. So self-forgiveness is everything right now, and Neptune would like to soften it, but it's also sort of confusing your direction. You don't quite know where you're going, and that's why I like prayer, meditation, taking the higher path, 
researching things, getting a little more educated about things, all of these things will work out better. Or as the president say, we will have nice weather from here on out. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> well, anyhow, greetings Taurus, welcome to your horoscope. So, we're beginning this week with, uh, the sun is now in your 8th house, so starting, you know, we're here starting with the 23rd of Friday the 23rd, we're looking at through the, the 30th, and um, this is transformation, this is things that you're not necessarily in control of, but you know, like if you're in a marriage or something, chances are good that your mate is doing rather well, like they might be getting rewards, they might be having good advice, they might be offering you, kicking you down some money, helping you out a little bit, everyone likes that, everyone needs somebody that loves them, to kick them down a little bit, something extra, to make everything go better. So, yeah, I would say if that is what is happening for you, you have every right to enjoy that and um, feel that, appreciate that as a good thing. Um, <coughs> i always been saying that Uranus in the 12th house makes you more of a rebel. That's opposing Venus in your um, sixth house. So it's like having taking care of your health, finding better ways to make a presentation. And Venus is getting pretty close, you know, to the seventh house. Uranus is getting pretty close to the first. Well, it's getting further away because it's retrograde. <clears throat> but, you know, that all the same, there's been a lot of uncertainty and things kind of up in the air and hard to keep everything on track. But uh, once you do, once you go there with it, you're going to be okay. You're going to be sailing better. It's like one thing to keep in mind, Taurus, is that you're not in control of the whole show other than your own emotions. And I think a let go attitude, live and let live, let other people take the reins for a little bit is probably going to serve you better. Just, you know, just for right now. <clears throat> All right, greetings, Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope. So, you had that big moon, big fat full moon yesterday, last night, this morning, still kind of affecting you. And, you know, one of the things, like, people say about, like, the Western Gemini moon in tropical astrology, regular Gemini moon, is that you really see the other side of people's personalities. And a lot of times with these, like, Black Friday sales, People just go trampling on each other and stuff. I think this happens more on the East Coast and out, out West, but it, it really gets nuts, you know. No, I saw that flat screen TV first, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and it's like, you know, I mean, I, I think of like Mercury as like the rulership of people that are really obsessed with gadgets and things and toys, you know, so that's not most of us. But it's a lot of us, you know, it's a lot of us. It's like one out of six of us, you know, and it has a thing, a material obsession in this country. And other people's material obsessions are often just a sense of belonging. Oh, I'm camping out for Black Friday, you know. It, it brings status to, you know, to the, you know, oh no, you know, these people aren't refugees, they're all just camping out for Black Friday. You know, they've been waiting for a long time for this sale to come. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Some of them are like, oh God, God, I wish, you know, no, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's tragic, you yeah. um, <clears throat> know. And so, what you've got to do this week is like you're, romantic life has gotten better, you know, you're, you're focused on partnerships, you're focused on your love life, you become a good sweet talker, you know, just what to say at the right time. All these things are qualities that can move you ahead, and now you've got not only Neptune in the 10th house, but Mars is there, which is a really good position for Mars, so you're in some ways able to show some leadership, especially if, it, if you have kind of a more softer spiritual approach to this leadership. It's more than likely going to work out better. All right. 
So, greetings Cancer, welcome to your horoscope. Well, now we got the North Node easing its way back into your first house. So it's like, what are you hungry for? What do you have a desire for that's so strong that you'd be willing to do almost anything for it? That you'd want to skip st steps to get to the final destination, so to speak. Um, right now, Sun, Jupiter, Mercury, all in your sixth house. What does that mean? It means that you're focused more on health issues right now. So being healthy, getting healthy. Um, full moon was in your 12th house, so you, you went through a lot of karma with family at Thanksgiving yesterday, uh, okay. if you're an American. So. And, and, and even if you're not an American, something maybe with family went down that you experienced some kind of karma with or over, and you feel over that. Um, the moon is going to be in Cancer on beginning Saturday night the 24th, and um, Neptune goes direct. So in a lot of ways, your spiritual life gets more fortunate and more lucky, and you're getting it. And um, Monday, Moon will be in Cancer. Very, It'll be a very Cancer-like Monday. And Sunday, of course, Moon's in Cancer. So Sunday and Monday, good days. Good days to plant your root crops, you know. Got some beets or carrots you want to put in raised beds. Uh, you know, you know if you're this far north, it probably is not going to do much movement till oh, you know, March. But you know, if you're down in the Carolinas or Central or Southern California or further south, Texas, whatever, you might you might get something going on pretty good. And um, you know, relationship-wise, things have been rough. You know, things have been harder and past difficulties in relationships seem to torment you more um, but you got to move forward everybody's got to move forward right now and um, you're hard at work I mean this could be a time when you're working more than usual as well and that's something worth looking at too and I guess your better days for money are going to be Tuesday and Wednesday all right so, greetings Leo, and welcome to your horoscope. So, let's see, what do we have here? Well, Sagittarius time is a fun time for Leo, because it's like fifth house. That's all about the heart. That's all about opening up. That's all about finding a way to um, be with your children, work your creative expression, get yourself maybe more education, um, travel to a place, a destination that represents something in your heart that makes you feel good in your heart. And it's um, getting in touch with your inner clown. You know, it's a very Leo thing. So in some ways, Sagittarius Sun really enhance Leo's Leo-like qualities. Generosity is there because we've got Jupiter passing to the fifth house, so you're going to be more generous with your children um, and support education, you know, with Mercury transiting the fifth house, you know, being smarter, supporting education, and um, the sun there, understanding your own capacity for leadership and for initiative in, in a big project. All of this can happen and it is a good thing to have it happen. I mean, on the other hand, you know, with Mars and Neptune in the um, eighth house, there's this deepness, like, oh, I want to go deep, understand things that are hidden, understand more about the mysteries. And we do have Moon and Leo this week on Tuesday and Wednesday. So, I mean, that's good. <coughs> Well, well, well. <clears throat> Greetings, Virgo. Welcome to your horoscope. So what's happening with you is um, you're trying to be more diplomatic about the things that irritate you. You're trying to go on the higher road and be more spiritual. You're also trying to find 
comfort. You're sort of more of a home buddy these days. You're keeping in touch with your mother more and your parents and trying to fix up your house, make your house nice for winter and for the holidays. And, um, you know, you're getting, you know, you're enjoying music and, and song more and you're, you're, you're about to get back into writing and painting and working with your hands more. And you're just trying to be very open about places where you've changed in your life, where you've had limits and you've had to work with them. And so you're welcoming some kind of renewal. You're hoping things will change and shift for the better. On Thursday, we do have a moon in Virgo. And, you know, it'll be there next Friday as well. So, I mean, those will be your, your power days are probably going to be Thursday and then a week from today, a week from Friday. Okay. All right. We go to the lovely land of Libra. Greetings, Libra, and uh, welcome to your lovely land and your land of loveliness. Um, what do we have here? Well, <clears throat> we've got Uranus in the seventh house, so, and then we've got Venus in the first house. And, I mean, this is, you know, what is surprising, what is inspiring, and People are looking to be inspired by love. They're moved towards love. They want to have more love. And they want to be free to love whoever they want. Oh boy, that's fun. Um, and, you know, with that freedom comes some kind of responsibility. Uh, working on health issues, Libra, that's really important right now. <clears throat> Stay with the program. Get yourself as healthy as you can. Um, money is um, comes through like communication, sales, um, letting people know what you need. You're working on limits with your family. You know, it's like, oh, I'm so over that. Right now, you're more comfortable with friends and siblings. You know, friends, siblings, working on communication. Those are very key things for Libra this week. And, you know, just the lunar position will be eventually by the end of the week in your 12th house. So it's like trying to make good karma. You know, you're in the public eye a lot this week and you want to do your best with what you got so that you make good. You know, you make good, do good. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, greetings, Scorpio, and welcome to your horoscope. So, I'm thinking to myself here, you know, Venus is in your 12th house, but by, by the end of, by beginning of next week sometime, Venus is going to be in your first house again. So, um, the love train is about to visit Scorpio. And um, we start the week with this full moon, and it's kind of transformational. It's a lot about letting go and things that really aren't in your control or in your power. And just working with that, like honestly working with, oh gosh, I, you know, that might not have been the right thing to do. Oh gosh, I could make improvements by doing such and such. Nothing wrong with that. Um... How to move forward, you know, how to move forward in a good way. Um, Sagittarius time is about making money. It's for you. It's second house, and it's about family, their issues. But it's really what you value and how to get more value. And right now with Mercury and Jupiter there and the sun there, it's like you're ready to get more value. I see you making more money and doing really good. And, you know, I've heard of a number of people who say even in spite of, you know, the disaster we have, there's a lot of jobs. There's a lot of work needed to be done, so that's a good thing. So people are getting their needs met, and uh, that that is important. And I'd say, you know, Sunday and Monday will be more powerful, lucky days for you because of um, the moon in the ninth house. But even with the moon in the tenth house, once it's in Leo, you, you still, you could manifest a good position for yourself. And... Um, 
your creative projects really are going to fly. You're going to need to work on those more uh, with Mars and Neptune transiting your fifth house. Hmm. <coughs> well, reading Sagittarius and welcome to your horoscope. So, you got it made. You know, you've got intelligence with Mercury. You've got good luck, good fortune, kind of a spiritually uplifting perspective with uh, Jupiter. And you have the sun get lighting your path, like honest truth, like I know what's in front of me, I know what my options are, this is how I'm going to move forward. Now, overcoming financial limits, you know, you got to make a practical strategic plan because Saturn's there. And you also have to be willing to let go of old ways of doing things that didn't work for you because Pluto's there. And the other thing is you have to let go of free, you have, you don't necessarily have to let go, but you need to listen to your intuition, you know, with the south node being present in your second house. That's going to help you with the money. And you have to realize that if you've been flirting and you're in a love relationship, they might have developed while Venus was retrograde, you know, the 16th or before. The chances are things can change. It could lead to really sticky karma. It might get better, but it might get, oh no, what did I do to myself? Um, and uh, there is a lot of excitement in your life. There's a lot of surprises. There's a restlessness of wanting to possibly move. There is a... Um, Worried about the stability of your children right now, taking taking account of that more. Um, this full moon was very romantic for you, and it could kind of intensify over the weekend, or you know, at least Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And um, <clears throat> but I would say, you know, your better days are going to more likely be on a Tuesday and Wednesday when uh, Jupiter is transiting, you know, and I mean your, your the moon rather is in your Jupiter world house, not Jupiter itself. Jupiter's in your first house, but then the moon will trine Jupiter on um, Tuesday, so a lot of good fortune will come about that way. Well, hello Capricorn, welcome to your horoscope. I think about Pluto in the first house as giving us insights and giving us that x-ray vision. It's like, this is what I want to see. This is what I know about. This is what happens better. This is what I can make better. So doing better, making better, all of this is um, part of your scenario this week, part of your karma. Um, south node now in your first house. so. It's like healing the past, healing past life trauma. That's a lot of what the South Node is about. And not being dense, don't ignore your hunches. Don't ignore your capacity to do something good and spiritual because that's, um, that's not going to help anything. You need to uh, focus on what, what is good and your ability to do the good. And um, <clears throat> I would say ch if you have a vehicle or a car, get it checked out. This is a really good time while Mars is transiting the third house. Check out your vehicles. Um, try to keep everything really peaceful. Um, it looks like Sunday, Monday, late Saturday night could be romantic for you. Um, and you're moving from a place where you've been beautifying your work environment and perhaps you'll bring that into your social world and in, into a party of some sort. Okay. Well, well, well. Greetings Aquarius and uh, welcome to your horoscope. So, I get this. You want to make sure that all your ducks are lying in a row. Now, right now, your social life is kicking. You're killing it there. You're killing it at the party scene. You're killing it with your negotiations with more powerful people, older people, even older siblings are coming to your aid and helping you. So this is a good time. It's like 
All the good information you've ever learned, it's like time to apply that. Put it into action right now. Um, and, you know, negative karma and bad things that happen are just fertilizer for more things to grow and more things to rise up and, and be better with. And it's important to keep the conversations chill, you know, with Uranus in the third and Mars in the second house. I can see how, you know, you like to shock people with your, you know, bold statements and broad strokes, and this might not be the time for it, so I just got to help you, you know, say, yeah, I got to take a chill, keep, chill pill, keep that in mind, um, looks like a lovely weekend, Friday, Saturday, having good times, maybe work on organization more, Sunday, Monday, and then by Tuesday, more romance, more love. Hmm. All right. Well, greetings Pisces and welcome to your horoscope. Um, so we've got Venus in the 8th house about to go in the 9th house. It's almost like this evolution of love It's that was a long distance relationship that kind of came closer is about to go farther away again. <laughs> or you're about to study foreign art, appreciate the music, the paintings and s sculptures of other cultures, even their architecture. Um, you're in a place where you could really assume more leadership right now. So the things that you do good, they're in the public domain for people to see. Um, you have friends in high places and you know they're kind of heavy people you know right now that are in your social circle and this has been going on for a while but now that Saturn's joined the party it's like oh my gosh our, our party's just one working out our uh, it's like a an encounter group to work out our past traumas <laughs> and um, but you're really strong right now you've got a lot of um, velocity to move forward and you've got a broader vision than usual and money comes in surprise ways um, and, um, you know, Sunday and Monday are really good days for water signs. You should do really well this week on those days. And just keep the faith, keep smiling, be with you next week. It's Cosmic Kevin, the Planetary Persuader. Like it, share it, and uh, tell a friend to tune in. Love your comments. We'll do this again.